Hey, and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leaning towards the singularity. I'm Nathan Waters. And I'm Tristan Grace. Welcome to High 45. Woo! <laughs> cool. This week, computers that read minds are being developed by Intel. Wow. Oh. Uh, Diggs finally released their new layout. Uh, future rock band is a cool concept of augmented reality and stuff. It's awesome. Sweet. And also a new concept of the new stove, a new stove top design. And... Future shock. That's the singularity topic for the week. Dun, 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 dun. It's going to be pretty amazing. I think it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty laid back, sort of fun episode this week. Yeah, got two bits to get through. So, <laughs> yep, I'm gonna. Do I usually never even get through half of one. So. Yeah, you don't. I'm always drinking, like, suckering away at them. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay, how could you? I'm not an apple blind people. Anything. Please don't stop sending your your support questions and comments, and it's okay. I'm okay. Uh, should I start with this one? Yes. This is a simple one. We, we've talked about this before. And they've been, like this one. Yeah, they've been talking about it before. Um, Intel is actually working on, they've said by 2020 they expect to have like either a mind implant or some kind of head device that can actually, you know, just use a computer like you normally would now with your, your keyboard and mouse, but with your mind. And they're doing it. And they're doing it. But this is the cool thing that, that I actually hadn't thought of before. Uh, the way they're starting to do this and it's, it'll sound very basic, but trust me, it'll, it'll work its way up, mm -hmm. is they're literally just um, getting patients to sit into an fMRI machine, and they get them to think of a word, mm -hmm. and then they just take a picture. Yeah. There you go. That's yeah. awesome. They now have, like, well, of one brain, but I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing they're going to do it of, like, thousands of people and do yeah. it hundreds, hundreds well, of thousands of times. That's such a basic yeah. idea, but that's brilliant. Yeah, because then you just attach the same machine to like the same you know portable device to anyone's head, and whenever they think cat, they they just you know compare it to a previously taken image so they know that okay, <laughs> when this when this occurs in the brain, that means they're thinking of cat. Exact same way they're, they're doing, doing voice recognition. Yeah, you just do it with the brain and just like retest it and retest it and retest it. Far out, that's cool. Well, I had that's pretty cool. Is this like how far have they gotten with it, or does it say or? Like, because I remember um, you brought it up before that Intel said within 10 years they're going to actually have mind interface. Yeah, yeah, that's, that was this year though. Still. That was this year, <laughs> yeah. So it was like by 2020. So, yeah, by 2020. 2020 still seems like the far flung future. No. <laughs> really close. Um, well, they say, it says here they already have a working prototype that can detect, uh, detect words such as screwdriver, house, and barn by measuring around 20,000 points in the brain. Those are pretty important words. <laughs> Common everyday use languages. Oh yeah, I say screwdriver all the time. Took a screwdriver to the barn and went up the house. Yeah, <laughs> that works. I don't know, this is pretty sweet. Yeah, but I mean, it'll, it'll get better. Once they actually have like our, our whole big thing of like hot overlays, like the, yeah. the glasses that can actually have an inbuilt fMRI scanner that can actually scan your head and they can see what you're looking at and they can read what you're thinking and see what yeah. you're doing and just cross reference it all and voila. My beer's frozen, by the way, so this is... <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. Let me put the other one. I, I really like that one. I think that's pretty epic. It's, uh, I'm getting there. Um, I'll go sorry. to the next one, being Diggs' new launch. We've been speaking about it for a while. We've been, you know, waiting for it, you know, the big thing. Yeah. Hoping it would be something... Revolutionary, something amazing. Save well, for social no, media. Well, well, thinking it'd be just Reddit. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I mean, look at what... Your closest like competitor and get like all the, the subreddit type. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's uh, it's not really. It's not even Reddit. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very um. It's pathetic. That they went the opposite direction. Like we thought that we'd go more. They'd go more towards the individual and trying to get individuals to promote it and stuff. And so you know all right. the power in the community. And keywords and tags. Yeah. And... Whereas they they've seemed to have gone the opposite way and uh, instead of going towards the larger community, say like Reddit and stuff, and going to more you know the the small guy, making them actual get their stories to the front if it's interesting. Yeah. They seem to have uh, reversed it a bit and made it so larger publishers are easier to follow and easier to see their stories. Um, the Pretty much the main thing that's changed is that you have my news now, where you decide what people you want to follow, just like Twitter. Yeah, it's, like, it's like Twitter for content. For yeah, pretty links. much, just links. Sure. And then you, you follow that and then you see it pop up. But yeah. They've removed a lot of things, like the upcoming news section. Yeah. You can't actually see things that are coming up at the moment, which is a bit of a disappointment. And when you submit things, they've reduced the categories, number of categories. Yeah. Which just makes it even worse. Like, I've been submitting every week High 45, you know, links. I haven't got a dig yet. <laughs> you got one. 
Dude, I won. Yeah. So this was pretty awesome. It's like you can't ever get anything to the front. Yeah. Unless you're like Mashable, who actually I'll have a look up. Well, you, you keep talking about. It. I'll have a look at how many followers they have. Because it is just that they had a, they had the whole power um, user issue was a big before. Well, even the, they hated it, and this is just yeah making it worse. Because now um, it just allows people to follow others like on Twitter. So obviously the big people like Huffington Post, like Mashable, all the big links like the hundred or so you know sites that are always submitted on the front just page in their little community and their little yeah. what they call like you know web 2.0 or whatever that's built around it's all the same it's funny even when the big power user that people were like making fun of and saying well not making fun of them saying like the big problem was a mr baby man he was the the main submitter to dig or well, main submitter he was like one of the top users on dig like most of the stuff he submitted actually went really well but he actually just wrote about how he really doesn't like the latest dig because it doesn't allow like small people to actually yeah. get it up there it's all the publishers he's given the power to the publishers which is a total reversal because i mean dig really when it started it was amazing because it was social it was like oh my god a group of people can pick what they like it was amazing yeah. revolutionary it was crazy it they beat off slash it beat off the other ones or yeah. editorials like you know people picking what they went and now he's seemed to have returned it a bit back or Pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like Mashable's got 41,000 followers. Mm. So it means any story they submit, it goes out to 41,000 people who are likely to upload mm. it or dig it. And just dig it again. Yeah. Was, I mean, was that, that was a big problem, like having friends and stuff with it that you'd just shout out to your friends and stuff. Yeah. Come and dig this. So, so <laughs> as a result, Reddit's getting a ton of traffic. Yeah, I just saw their top story was one of the administrators actually saying, this is how you use Reddit and please use yeah, it this every way. <laughs> They, they sort of anticipated because they had a lot of um, uh, problems, like the site was down for quite a few times. Yeah. Well, that's, that's to be expected though. Well, so I mean, that's the digs, the, the stuff they've done, like technologically wise, mm. the design is awesome. Like submitting a link, automatically creating stuff. Great. Yeah, it's very clean. Absolutely great. It's but nice. they just went the wrong way. Like they started because they gave the power to like beginning people, like the small guy, like yeah. allowing anyone to actually have a story promoted to the top. And they've they've changed. They've actually gone into now getting the, the larger people to actually have it pop yeah. up. Whereas, like, I mean, that's why I think Reddit's gone further was just because of the subreddit. That was really the only well, yeah, innovation. The, the subreddit's just barely keeping them alive. Yeah, now. that's the only innovation. They're, they're, they I think they're having the same information overload that Dig had. Yeah, true. I mean, they're getting to the same point now where it's, there's so many people there and there's so much content that just, you're getting the mainstream shit mm. going through again and everyone just hates it. Yeah. Because you look at the front page, like, was it sixty percent of it? It's just image links. Yeah, like just just <laughs> funny just photos, funny pictures, funny pictures. Yeah, it's, so it's that sad. Reddit will die soon again because of information overload. Yeah, they're gonna go the same way as Dig did. And there'll be a new thing to pop up. Yeah. See, it may have already popped up, but you just haven't heard about it yet. Probably. Yeah. I mean, all of it is just a community. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Uh, go to uh, your, your next, next one. one. Oh, this is beer. <laughs> Get through two of them. I can barely get anything from the damn thing. It's a, and that one I can't even drink out because it's frozen all at the top. Stupid fucking beer. That's just cruel. <laughs> Stop sexual. fingering your beer. Um, this is a really cool video. Like it's obviously CG. Doesn't exist yet. But it is um, rock band with augmented reality. So this guy's like playing a keyboard and the notes stream down like directly onto the keys and you just hit them as they go. And and it does the same thing for, if I skip along a bit, for the guitar or the bass and just they stream down and he's just like playing them. And one of the coolest ones is probably the drums. That is really cool. Sorry. Um, just yeah, it just comes down to the cymbals and stuff. Now this might seem really, really like futuristic and CG and like completely fake, but it's not. You could literally like you could do this with a mobile phone now. Like software on a mobile phone, I'm sure could do this if you held it up. But the problem is you'd have to hold it up. Yeah. What they kind of need, if they had essentially again the HUD overlay, is like just simple glasses with simple screens, but you kind of need the, the high res. Why not have it? Just say. Look at it. Well, like say an iPad or something like a big pad or something you have a, a guitar or even better like say a keyboard and stuff and you have like just a giant screen just coming up like overlaying it at the top instead of having your music up there you have the actual like the computer screen coming up at the top and then you could just have it the exact same way as that you just have it coming down but it have to be attached or something yeah well it just you have to do this is, you'd have to do it with maybe a up. camera overlay you could actually have it like doing a camera over the top and you play it while looking through it I'd it's still the same type of thing. I think. I think the only way you could possibly get this is with the hard overlays. 
Hmm. Because then, like, the software for that is simple. They could, they're already doing that with mobile phones now. Like, you yeah. basically just, you know, show a little crazy animation on top of the thing through your phone and, yeah. Yeah. But if they had the HUD overlay, just so you could see it, you could just look at whatever guitar you're, you're playing or keyboard and it just... Or saxophone. Wherever you move, it would just line it up so it's perfectly... Even if you had to make little lines. marks on your on your keyboard or whatever you it was... You wouldn't need to. It just literally it'd mm. line up with the keys. It's got a yeah. very simple lineup. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah, the, the piano and stuff yeah. would be pretty. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Just Same with the drums, just find the, the drums circle easy, and yeah. do that. Same Let's with the, the guitar, just find the, this. What do they call this? The frets. The frets, yeah. And then just line it up. We're pretty damn Software sweet. is simple. It's just we need the the cut over. See, that could be a, a big killer app. That I mean, you release glasses that allow you to do that. Just make them single function to begin with. That could actually be kind of cool. Well, we've mentioned that before, haven't we? Yeah, we have. <laughs> Someone please make, uh, just make glasses that don't even have a screen in them. Just no screen. It's just literally mm. camera in the front or video camera in the front. I've looked into the details. There are actually, there are devices that are small enough now. There is um, a video camera that's tiny, like fraction of a, you know, centimeters, I think. And there is Bluetooth things as well that are really tiny. It could fit into normal looking uh, glasses, hook it up to your phone, upload it to Twit TwitPic. Yeah. Just do that. Do that. That'll make you millions. And then use those money to reinvest into a prototype and make it better. And start yeah. to get those screens in there. Just keep on going. Because the problem is they, they haven't done the screens yet because um, they need the really, really high res. Like the pixels need to be so tiny. Well, you, to also do it like, how, how are our transparent screens? I don't think they're that yeah. amazing. Well, they're, they've made prototypes. Yeah. Because that's, that's you, about it. Because it's probably better to have a transparent screen where you can have it come down rather than actually recording the out of the yeah. eyes and then doing it that way. Yeah. But the them. thing is that there's still the LCD or OLEDs where they use yeah. at the moment. They don't. Um, nah, it's small enough and they yeah. don't look good. The DPI isn't good enough They don't have to look that good. They just, if it's just basic symbols like that, don't yeah. want it. I mean, the basic of the basic symbols. Yeah. This is a, it's, it's a very cool, very cool concept. Cool. I guess kind of leads on to my one. Which is this awesome yep. concept for a stove. And it's, uh, the, the reason I brought this up, the reason I want to talk about this, which I think is really cool, is that the stove's just one of those things that you just take for granted. That like, oh, you've either got gas or electric, but you know, pretty much the stove's a stove, that's it. You don't worry about it, you don't think about it. Yeah. But this video was just absolutely ingenious. There's tons of little like dots around and uh, they're like in a honeycomb pattern. And uh, wherever you put the pot or the pan or whatever you want to heat, just the dots underneath it light up and heat it. Yeah, it's such it a, senses where it, it senses where it is, senses the yeah. weight, and it's yeah, nice and easy. You just put them on this surface, it detects where you where you're going there, and it heats it up. Yeah, it's nice, simple, basic, and just amazing design. I I just love the idea, and yeah, cool. it really got me thinking that then there's so much stuff out there that you just take for granted, like the stove. You never thought of like improving that or doing stuff like maybe really fleeting, but you don't worry about it. Whereas, especially as 3D printers start becoming like more ubiquitous and we're able to actually design and change all of these things that we take for granted, but mm. you're going to see a lot of cool, cool shit. It'd be cool. It probably is, they'll charge premium for it. That's the problem. Oh, they're <laughs> going to charge, yeah, massive premium for this, but still, it's like, yeah, you how could, you any prototype starts. Yeah, you can make it, but no one's going to buy it for the price they'll put it up for. Yeah. That's the issue. But see, it's, it's just over time. It's just after a prototype, it'll come back down and it'll be nice. And it just really got me thinking after seeing this, uh, looking around at all the different objects and seeing how you can improve them, like what you could do. Like when you're a kid again, uh, rem like I remember like thinking, oh, it'd be awesome to be an inventor and stuff, or how could I improve doing this, or yeah. all of that. Whereas now you're just like, oh, I, I accept a stove's a stove. When well, it doesn't have to be, it can be something really cool. Even like right now, I'm looking around and stuff, like looking at the table, I love a <laughs> Microsoft Surface. Like, when is that coming out? Like, come on. Yeah. I mean, it's a few restaurants and stuff, but I want a giant yeah, there's table. The, the yeah. economies of scale type thing is well, too yeah. expensive. Yeah, true. And they always, whenever they push something out, they uh, put so much money into R&D that they have to recoup their costs doing that, all, that whole yeah. premium pricing model. 